fellow marketers. So I'm really excited to hear what Contricia has going on. I'm sure she's going to drop some gems for us today, like always. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, thanks for having me. Definitely. Absolutely. And you have been in marketing for how long now? 12 years. So actually today is my 12th year. Oh my God. Well, congratulations. Thank you. I hate that you have to spend it sitting in the house. <laughs> and I, I honestly don't remember that it's my, like the year anniversary until LinkedIn is like, hey, by the way. <laughs> Hey, congratulations. But yeah, today is the of year. And I love your story on how you ended up in marketing and how you pivoted in business to end up in marketing. Tell people a little bit about that story. Um, I started out as a makeup artist professionally in 2006, and it was an accidental thing. My aunt was a wedding planner in Memphis, Tennessee, and I kind of got pushed into being her wedding makeup artist and realized I could make money doing that. Um, so I started doing that and then makeup became this big trend. It became something that everybody was doing. And I was an agency sign makeup artist getting published. And I just realized that my passion wasn't there anymore. Um, so I took the contacts that I had as a makeup artist and leveraged them to become a marketer and a publicist. And so I branched into music and sports first. And then from there, grew into small, medium business, nonprofits and corporations. So you talked about marketing and as a publicist, and a lot of folks don't really understand the difference. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit about the difference between marketing, advertising, and public relations? So advertising is a method that you use to actually visually reach your audience through copy, context, that kind of thing. You see a lot of digital advertisements now, but when you think of advertising, what a lot of people think of are the traditional ads that we typically see in magazines, billboards, things like that. So it's just a way to create awareness through means and efforts that actually reach a desired audience. Marketing in public relations, and that's the thing now, is that I see a lot of people say that they're a publicist, but they're creating logos. Mm -hmm. um, and I see a lot of people saying that they're marketing or marketers, but they're creating press releases and doing media relations. Mm -hmm. So public relations is, of course, is the relationship with the publics, which are typically your market. Mm -hmm. um, you have media relations, you have consumer relations. And it's also, though, the creation of content and copy mm -hmm. that captures the brand uh, tone and message. Whereas marketing is how you push that out and how you get that in front of people. So it's a different strategy that coincides with public relations, mm -hmm. which is why you see IMC, uh, which is my agency name, New IMC, which is Integrated Marketing and Communications. So it's taking advertising, it's taking branding, and it's taking public relations and mixing it all together and getting it out there. Um, so marketing is the efforts and the strategy that you use to create an awareness in front of your publics, in front of your market segment, in front of that target demographic that you've identified um, through social media, digital marketing, through your blog, through your website, through different efforts and mediums. And now for the folks, um, do you think uh, as for small business owners, I know you have a lot of corporate clients, but for small business owners, do you think that it's important? How important do you think it is to have an overall marketing strategy? And do you think it's important? Public relations strategy? Um, public relations is not something that everybody needs right away. Public relations is something that you grow into, um, but it is critical that you have a marketing strategy as soon, like in the early stages of your business. So after you have done the whole uh, viability study and making sure that your business is something that can thrive past a trend, um, it is critical to then get with the team or eat or coach and develop a strategy of some sort to get you that awareness. Because we tend to see small businesses that feel like so, so, social media, I use it every day so I can do it. And that is not the truth. Um, it's not that easy to turn personal use of a social media um, platform into business use because there needs to be a strategy behind it. What time are your people coming on? What do they want to see? What kind of content are they looking at? What is your competitors doing? And as a small business, you know, I've heard a lot of small businesses tell me, um, I don't have competition. I don't see anybody else. You should see somebody else. <laughs> you, have um, to. you should see somebody they else. See you. <laughs> they, they definitely see you. And if as a small business, it is easier to watch your competition make 
the mistakes than to be the person making the mistakes mm -hmm. yourself. It's easier to watch somebody else make a $10,000 marketing mistake than you be the one forfeiting the $10,000. But your marketing strategy has to make sense. It's not create a business, come up with a name, get a logo, and then join every social media platform. That's not how it works. You know, it's create the business, then go through the proper steps and the proper channels in order to make sure that you have something that can last. Absolutely. And I love that there are people like yourself that are helping to get that message out, but also helping people to do these things. Mm -hmm. um, I know you said that now you have more time to invest, you know, in the smaller businesses. Uh, now that we have some downtime, invest in your personal brand and how you help smaller, small business clients. So tell us a little bit about what that looks like right now and where you're going um, over the next month or two as we, we're <laughs> stuck in the house. <laughs> Right. So um, my professional company is New IMC, but I have my personal brand, which is Contrice Atanye. And my tagline is turning dreams into plans and plans into actions. So what we're doing is the whole ideation to creation and implementation of develop or developing strategies and efforts for small businesses. Um, so it's that, you know, a lot of small businesses are DIY and a lot of small businesses can't afford a larger corporate agency on their budget. So what do you do? How can we still help them? And that's where I came up with Contricia Tanya. Um, so over the next month or so, you'll see a lot of courses start to roll out. Um, I'm launching my first one on April 6th. I had to look at my calendar real quick. <laughs> on April 6th. Um, and if you follow me on social media, you'll start to see more about registrating or registration for that. But um, it's just about creating because I'm a small business. So I know what it's like to have the need, but not have the budget to be able to do it. So finding those people who are willing to invest as much time into your brand, into your business, into your company as you are without blowing your budget on marketing because you still have to have that ad spend. So my focus is more of the businesses who either have the budget to implement it or those who just need the strategy and want to do it themselves. Think we lost Danielle? I'm sorry, I completely <laughs> my computer like completely shut down there. <laughs> 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 Um, but I'm glad, again, that you are putting that information out there and that you are really um, doing what you have to do to educate the community, rolling out classes. I know you have a new Facebook group. Tell us about the new Facebook group. Facebook, Facebook group is renewed. So it's all about intentions. Um, again, everything that you see that has the word new in it, mm -hmm. it's branded with my agency. So it's N-E-U. Um, but it's renewed. So it's an accountability group for small and medium businesses where people post about their needs. What are they looking for? They can grow their business, grow their network. Um, and then on Wednesdays, we allow them to do their elevator pitch in the comments. So it's just all about connecting small and medium business owners in this time. Um, and everybody has a resource or a talent or a skill that someone else can use. So how can we maximize that? Absolutely. So let's talk about real quick the accountability piece of things. I think that yeah is so important right because i tell you i'll sit over here and not do anything if, I, if i'm not held oh, up, you know, so. right right accountability is huge yeah i love that you you started that and i mean like i said i will sit here and not work out not eat right not work on my business but having people that hold me accountable has made a huge change in my life it does and that's the thing a lot of people you really don't realize the value of accountability until you realize how unproductive you've been, especially being at home. You know, a lot of people are excited to work from home. I'm not as much um, just because I sit here and my office looks right into my kitchen. So mm -hmm. I can constantly think of things that I can do around the house. Like, oh, I can wash a lot of clothes or, oh, it's pretty outside. Let me go and sit on the balcony. Oh, look at the food in the kitchen. Let me go eat. Um, so it just, 
it's one of those things where if you have somebody who knows your desire and knows that you want to accomplish some things, but that you may lack motivation in some areas, they can just keep you there. And I think accountability is something that everybody needs. You know, it's not just for the, those people just starting out. Um, and it's not not for the people at the top. Like we all need it from CEO down to the very last work on the pole. So it's it's everybody in between. Absolutely. Now I want you to drop us one tip. Like we, we got this time, right? We all are, most of us are staying in the house um, like we're supposed to be if we're not essential workers. Right. But, so we really need to use this time wisely. And as small business owners, it's a great time to work on your business, work on yourself, work on your brand. Drop us one tip for everyone to use over the next however long we're in the house to really get their business heading in the right direction? Um, I think my biggest tip is a productivity tip. So uh, using, like you said, maximizing the time that we have now. And it's so easy to look at the magnitude of a, pro of a project and get overwhelmed. So this is something that I use daily. I do it every night before I go to sleep. I map out my next day and break it down into 10 minute projects because it takes the size of one, like if you have to add, or if you're designing your website, you can take that one big project that can take you four or five days, two or three weeks. Um, and then you break it down into two or into 10 minute projects. So like the first 10 minutes, you might want to create the copy for your homepage or the first 10 minutes, you might be developing your site map but you divide it into these smaller 10 minute subset projects that you've one feel accomplished because you're checking off something as you're going. And it allows you to break a large scale project down into smaller increments. So I can take something that honestly an eight hour work day for me with creating press releases, um, going back and having the whole media relations tidbit, creating a strategy, analytics, things like that. I can take an eight minute day and if I really stay structured with it, I can break it down to about three and a half, four hours. That's so that's my biggest tip is, you know, don't get so caught up. And that's another thing, like, don't get so caught up and feel like you have to do something. This might just be a time to reflect. It might be your time to figure out if it's time to scale back. It might be your time to figure out your contingency plan, because I don't think a lot of small businesses have that. None of us really were looking or expecting for this to happen now. So it might be that it's just now time, you know, it might be time for you to just sit there and watch a movie or finish the book you wanted to read. Don't feel so pressured into having to start something now because that only adds to your stress. You know, like if you have something that you want to finish, then finish it. But don't feel like you have to do something right now because we don't have anything to do for the next 30 days. I like that. And I like breaking it down into small things. So you do feel like you're at least accomplishing something. You, know? you do. I feel like, like you're I, using you know, your time wisely. Yeah. I, like I break it down. You see, like it has the date, it has big projects, meetings, and then it breaks down everything that I need to do into little check boxes. And I feel pretty good when I check out something. I'm going to try that and try to get my life in order. <laughs> Try it. It's one of my favorites. I've been doing it. Think, you know, this is really like you said. While we have this time, and it can be very stressful. It's a great time to just really figure out what you need to do to get your life in order. <laughs> like you know, yeah. and that's what I've been trying to do. Like what are the things I need to do to get myself to eat healthy, like to exercise. Like what do I? Even if it's just planning for once we're out of this, you know. It is. That's the thing. And the biggest thing that I really want to push small and medium fuss as businesses and people just watching this video. If you have a business of any sort, think about your resiliency plan and your continuity plan. You know, how are you? We're supposed to have these plans and these processes in place that show us how we will be able to come out of this after the disaster. So once COVID is over with and the trees are blooming and everybody is back outside. What does it look like for your business? And the harsh reality is, is that a lot of people will not financially be in a place to automatically go back in and start supporting small and medium sized businesses. So what can you do to create that relationship and make sure that that's maintained? And then also your continuity plan and your contingency plan. You know, if this yeah. might be the point that you realize it's time to close this door and open a new one. But figure that all out right now. That's the biggest thing. And one last thing is, do you feel like folks should be marketing their business during this time? Because I think a lot of folks are kind of scared 
to be selling when there are folks that are losing jobs and, you know, things like that. But then you see larger companies, the car companies are like, come buy this car. We're going to waive three months of payments. You know, like America has not stopped selling. But I see that a lot of small businesses are concerned about pushing their products and services. What are your thoughts about that? It can seem insensitive, but honestly, businesses don't catch viruses, um, sadly. You know, um, yeah, but the world has seemed to stop. Everything around us has seemed to be on pause, but you still need to create that content and that information for people to still know who you are. If you just stop, then you lose the real estate that you've worked so hard to gain. Mm -hmm. So I've seen posts where they're like, you know, don't, don't sell or, and it's not so much that you're pushing the sale, but definitely still create that content and let them know that you're there. Um, you can create content that's sensitive, you know, like em empathetic. Empathy yeah. is a big thing. So if you're if you feel like there's a market um, and that you need to be empath or you need to empathize with your market, then empathize. But that's what the whole social media thing is. Hold on, wait, my light just went off. <laughs> that's the whole social media thing is that you have to create um, opportunities and content that continue to allow them to engage. And if you just don't market, if you don't push that, then you lose that relatability, you lose that relevancy, and you lose the real estate that you have worked hard to obtain. Fantastic. I absolutely agree. Um, yeah. I think that you can market <laughs> and still be sensitive, you know, yeah. to what's going on and just and remain relevant mm -hmm. to your clients and even reaching out and saying, are you okay? You know, and then you got folks like me who keep getting packages delivered to the house. So people are still shopping. <laughs> Look, Teresa got a shopping problem. So <laughs> I'm still shopping. I just had some stuff come in a day. But yeah. don't, you, know, you can send out an email campaign and just say, hey, we're just checking on you. Here's seven times. Here's seven things you can do to, to stop the spread. That's, I mean, just continue. They're giving you the hashtags. They're giving you the content to be there maximize leverage and just keep talking to your audience fantastic well thank you so 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 thank much for having me. me i have learned stuff i every time i'm in your presence i learn stuff so as a up and coming marketer i appreciate everything that you do and have done um and i look forward to everything that you'll be rolling out last thing tell people how they can find you it's scrolling across the bottom of the screen yes. but for anybody who may have missed it <laughs> Contricia Tanya on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. Uh, so it's C-O-N-T-R-E-C-I-A-T-A-N-Y-A-E. Um, and then you'll start to see a lot of stuff say Dr. T as well. Um, but yeah, Dr. T, Contricia Tanya, we're all the same person. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you again for joining no me. I appreciate you. And I look forward to seeing you when we can get back outside. Yeah, hey, drinks on me. First round of drinks on me. <laughs> All right, have a great evening. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All righty. Okay.